Hey everybody, good day. My name is Greg McLawson. I'm the Affidavit of Support Lawyer. I help green card holders enforce rights under the USCIS Form I-864, and I serve as a consulting expert in family law cases when folks are enforcing the Affidavit of Support in the context of a divorce proceeding. Trying out a new mic today, hope it works okay. Today I wanted to chat about an issue that we get questions about basically every day. And that is how to withdraw the USCIS form I-864. I guess the good and bad news on that is that there's a clear answer to that. Um, it's just not necessarily the answer folks are hoping for. So let's dive into it um, and then we can talk about the nitty gritty details of how the affidavit gets withdrawn. So basic rules. Um, this is governed by a provision of federal regulations at 8 CFR 213A.2, subsection F, that should be linked in the comments. And the rule that's in the federal regulations is very clear. Basically, as the affidavit sponsor, and this applies to primary sponsors, joint sponsors, also called co-sponsors, also to somebody who signs an I-864A as a household member. So anybody in that kind of affidavit of support sponsor world, they can withdraw the affidavit if they do so, A, in writing, and B, before status is granted to the intending immigrant. That's the person applying for immigration status. Let's break that down a little bit. So there, there are two different subsections in this federal provision. One applies to immigrant visa applications. So that's somebody who's outside of the United States and is applying for an immigrant visa through a consulate. So these are sometimes referred to as CR1 visas. If somebody's applying based on a marriage of less than two years in duration, an IR1 visa. Uh, immigrant visa, if it's somebody who's in a longer term marriage to a US citizen. But just writ large, this, this provision applies to somebody who is applying for a, a visa and they are already outside of the United States. There's a second provision in, this, in the regulation that applies to adjustment of status. These are sometimes called green card applications. The basic idea is that this is somebody who's in the United States seeking to change their status to U.S. resident without leaving the United States. But the rule is the same for both, both of those classes of applicants. And that is that the sponsor can withdraw the affidavit if they communicate the request in writing, and that request is received by the adjudicating officer before either a visa is granted to the intending immigrant or in the case of a green card application, the adjustment of status application is, is granted. Once status is granted, so after the visa has been issued, after the green card applicant has achieved residency and the I-485, that's the residency application, after that has been approved. At that point, the ship has sailed and the sponsor no longer has the opportunity to withdraw the affidavit of support. That shouldn't be a surprise if you think about the overall purpose of the affidavit of support. This is a broader, a component of a broader statutory scheme that is intended to prevent um, intending immigrants from becoming what's called a public charge. That means dependent on public resources for support. The whole idea behind the affidavit is that um, green card sponsors and joint sponsors, folks who sign an additional affidavit of support, serve as a financial um, guarantor for the intending immigrant. So that sponsor or sponsors plural, if there's a joint sponsor involved, those folks are intended by Congress as the financial safety net for the immigrant. So if that sponsor could just withdraw the affidavit after the person has already acquired residency status, that would kind of undermine the entire purpose of the affidavit of support to begin with, which again 
is to place a financial support obligation on that affidavit sponsor. Okay, so that's the general rule. In writing, before status is granted. What about the details? Well, for anybody who has any familiarity with USCIS, um, you know um, that is an agency that loves forms. There are scabs of forms for every conceivable purpose. And you might wonder whether there is a specific one for withdrawing the affidavit. Um, the answer is no. There is no formal USCIS form that you'll find anywhere on the website. Nor is there any uh, magic language, as lawyers sometimes uh, refer to it. There's no specific language that needs to be included in a request to withdraw the affidavit. The same is true for the U.S. Department of State. Department of State governs applications, visa applications that are being processed abroad, and there's no DS form, you know, I-864-W, WW, um, for withdrawing the affidavit. Uh, the only rule is that it be made in writing and received by the adjudicating officer before status is granted. Um, but therein lies the kind of the complicating factor for withdrawal requests. Um, whether we're talking about a visa application or an application to adjust status, um, there's this issue of catching up with where the application is in the adjudication process. So with an immigrant visa application, you've got a petition file here in the United States, then it goes to the National Visa Center, magic happens, and later it ends up at a consulate abroad where the interview is ultimately conducted. Likewise, for an um, application to adjust status, it's filed in the United States, it goes to a service center, which is like a central processing facility, and then it's eventually farmed out to a local field office. You as a sponsor have a potential problem if that application is going through its typical life cycle, and at some point you decide, I'm not going to be a part of this and I'm going to withdraw the affidavit of support. Well, that application is going along its merry way to adjudication. For a visa application, maybe it's at the National Visa Center, maybe it's on a truck going from the National Visa Center to get shipped over to um, Turkey for adjudication. So you've got a potential issue if you're trying to play catch up with where the file is. Um, same thing for green card applications here in the United States, that um, the application at some point is going to be shipped from a service center to a field office. And you're going to want to understand where the file is and um, specifically what field office it's going to ultimately get to. Um, if, if you jump the gun, for example, and you send a withdrawal request here to the Seattle field office before they have an application file, um, it may very well be the case that that um, request to withdraw uh, doesn't sync up with the application file. And when the adjudicating officer is sitting down to review the I-485 application for the green card application, your withdrawal requests might not be there. So that's a problem. And some sophistication is required um, to get a hold of that petition receipt, an application receipt, and try to make an educated guess about where in the process um, you think the case file is. Um, unfortunately, there's no uh, magic um, way to check on the exact adjudication status of um, a I-45 application or an immigrant visa application, especially if you are the joint sponsor and you aren't um, the beneficiary of the uh, I-864, meaning you aren't the visa applicant. And if you're the joint sponsor, um, you might not even have the application uh, receipt number for the underlying application. So <clears throat> um, what should you do? Probably the safest bet is to cover all your bases and shotgun out basically your withdrawal request. So let's take the example of somebody who's um, living here in the Seattle area and is applying for residency. 
uh, you know or should know that that um, I-485 residency application is eventually going to come back here to the Seattle field office for adjudication. So if you are, let's just use the example of a joint sponsor. If you're the joint sponsor in that scenario and you want to withdraw your I-864, what you would want to do is send the request both um, to the service center and also to the Seattle field office because you don't know where in the application life cycle it is better to cover all your bases. Um, to determine um, where to send uh, the field office request for withdrawal, go to the I-485 application instructions on uh, the USCIS website and figure out which office has jurisdiction over the US state in which the applicant is um, situated. Um, same thing for a Department of State application that if you've got, let's just say, an applicant um, in the United Kingdom who's going to be processing through the London consulate, best to send your withdrawal request both to the National Visa Center and also to the London consulate. If at all possible, you definitely want to have the um, immigrant visa case number, um, which is going to be available to the beneficiary. Um, but if you're a joint sponsor, you might not have that available to you. So it might be that the best you can do is to provide the information you do have about the applicant. So presumably that will be, of course, their full legal name. Um, certainly you should have their date of birth because that would have gone on the affidavit of support. Um, if they have an alien number, that should be available to you. But many applicants for an immigrant visa or residency status will not already have an alien number assigned. That's for tracking folks through the immigration process. If they're new to the system, they won't have an alien number. Um, but again, if you did have an A number, that'll be on the affidavit of support that you signed. So um, in that request to withdraw, again, all available information about the applicant, ideally their application case number, and then a clear statement that you, the affidavit sponsor, are choosing to withdraw your affidavit. You don't have to cite the regulatory provision. You may as well. I certainly do when I submit a withdrawal request. And that again is eight Code of Federal, Code of Federal Regulations, uh, 213A.2, subpart F, and then it's either subpart one or F1 or F2, depending on whether it's a visa application or a green card application. All of this is linked in the blog post that is in the comments to this uh, video. And I'm also going to go ahead and upload a copy of the letter that we use at the law firm when we represent people in requests to withdraw the I-864. You'll see there's nothing especially magic in that letter. It just says in plain English that the person is choosing to withdraw their application. Because again, both for Department of State and for USCIS, there is no mandatory form that you have to use. It simply needs to be made in writing and clearly state a request to withdraw. Um, this is probably basic um, advice for anyone, but when you send your withdrawal request, of course, this should be by a certified mail or at the very least um, priority mail with tracking so that you can later prove that your request um, was successfully sent. Because after you send a request to withdraw the affidavit of support, um, you almost certainly are not going to get um, any acknowledgement from USCIS or from the Department of State. They don't send a receipt notice for your withdrawal requests. And in the cases I've worked on, don't send any acknowledgement at all that the I-864 has been withdrawn. The first communication of any sort that's likely to come up, um, if at all, will be a request for evidence to the applicant saying, hey, we no longer have an affidavit of support on file for you, or it might come up at the interview. And they are told the affidavit of support has been withdrawn, your application isn't approvable until you get one on file. But as the affidavit sponsor, you should not assume that you're going to get a nice confirmation um, letter um, in the mail. And that can be a little frustrating and scary if you're the sponsor because you don't know if that withdrawal request was successfully received or not, which is one reason to 
take this process really carefully um, if you do elect to withdraw. I hope this has been helpful. Um, check out the blog post for the details that we do have available. I'll go ahead and post um, a sample letter that we use when we withdraw affidavits of support. If you have general questions, feel free to jump into the comments and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Everybody take care. Have a good week.